you and I have to stand up against fear. We do not accept fear into our lives. Fear generates all kinds of evil. It's the devil's tool to get you off of God's word and off of God's promises. Amen. Turn to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And what, what I want to talk about is we need to overcome fear by faith. There's no other way to counteract fear than by faith. Because faith and fear are totally opposite from each other. But at the same token, they work the same way. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Matter of fact, the word in that scripture, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God is the Greek word rhema. Rhema word, which means a spoken word from the whole word of God. A spoken promise that the Holy Spirit brings to your attention. It jumps off the page at you. He illuminates a certain scripture to you that you can use to stand on against trouble, fear, doubt, unbelief, sickness, whatever it is coming against you, the Holy Spirit will bring that to your attention and you can put your faith in that promise of God and overcome fear. And we'll talk about what fear is in just a minute. You, be, you might be surprised about what fear is because everyone is faced with fear every day. Some form of fear. You know, I, I know there's lots of macho guys around in the world. I am not afraid of anything. Well, how about public speaking? <laughs> uh, aha, got you there, didn't I? Or, or, or how about your wife? <laughs> okay, let's not go there. But uh, there are lots of different forms of fear that we don't even realize sometimes. 1 John 5, 4 says, whatever is born of God. Are you whatever is born of God? Yes, I am a whatever is born of God. I've been born again. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And it's talking about the world system, not the, not the ground, the earth, but the world system, people in the system. Uh, things in the system, whatever the devil generates from the, the, from the heavenly places where he roams. He's the prince of the power of the air. No wonder the devil likes it to generate his fear through the airwaves, through the TV waves, through internet, through the radio, whatever it is. He loves to use that because he's the prince of the power of the air. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. The faith that you have that God gave to you. That's how it overcomes, that's what overcomes the world. That's what overcomes fear. Fear is opposite of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Fear comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Satan. Whatever he generates, that's how fear comes. He is responsible for all fear. Let me read this to you before we go too much farther. This, this is very powerful. This is a study that has been made several times. Not, it's a scientific study. This is not Bible. This is scientific study people have done throughout the ages. Studies show that 75% to 95% of the illnesses that plague us today are a direct result of our thought life. What you think about all the time. 
and we're bombarded. Even when they show you a commercial on TV about this new medicine, they say it may cause we, we have to put a clause in this thing. It may cause hallucinations and, and epileptic fits and even death. Well, thank you very much. I don't want that pill. <laughs> they all have side effects. And we're bombarded with that in our thought life. You have to, on purpose, think the faith way. You have to, on purpose, stop everything and think God's way. Because otherwise, you're just saying, you're speaking and thinking what you're hearing. And we are hearing a lot of bad news that generates fear. Watch the news very limited. Watch television programs that generate fear very limited. You know, in our society, we, I, I don't know, we love those thrillers, movies. We love the, the uh, shoot them up and uh, it, it's gone off the deep end, if you ask me, with the video games. And the rest, it's all about killing. How many people did you kill today? That's what the video games are. If you don't think that that generates fear, you're mistaken. What you think about, what you put in front of your eyes, what you hear with your ears, is going to affect you. Nothing happens where you can just say, well, that doesn't bother me. That doesn't affect me whatsoever. Then why is it that America takes more pills to go to sleep and then to wake up, pills for feeling depressed, pills to pick you up and give you, we have drinks now that, we, that will energize you. A five-hour energy drink because you've been depressed all for three days. Why do you think that is? It's because of what we feed ourselves, what we hear about, and the way we live our life. Yes. Most of the time we're walking in darkness. Even though there's light, we're walking in darkness. And how can light have fellowship with darkness? It can't. But by the same token, darkness cannot overtake the light. If you go into, into a, let's, let's take the reverse of a flashlight. This is not a flashlight, it's a flash dark. If you have a, a flash dark with you and you come into this room and it's all lit up, it's not going to do much. But if you come into a dark room with a light, pretty soon, hey, I can see. A little bit of light will cancel out the dark. And that's what we are. We are a light to the world. Or we should be. We shouldn't be a dark to the world. We should be a light to the world. Amen. Amen. The average person, listen to this, the average person has over 30,000 thoughts a day. 30,000 thoughts. If you're not watching television or on the internet, you're on your iPhone or you're at Myers listening to all the gossip and the reports and you're in the restaurant and listening to the complaining. And you are having... You have 30,000 thoughts. How many of those 30,000 thoughts are faith thoughts? <laughs> it should be a good percentage, don't you think? It should be a good percentage. Through an uncontrolled thought life, we create conditions of stress and illness. Uncontrolled. We already have been given the fruit of the Spirit. You're born again, you have the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness, temperance, and faith. You have 
the, the conditions, you have self-control. You might not be exercising your self-control, but you should be. It's in you. If you exercise something, it gets stronger. If you exercise your muscles, they get stronger. You exercise your faith, it gets stronger and bolder. Is anybody hearing me? Yes. You have to exercise your faith, especially because we are bombarded in our society 30,000 thoughts a day. We make ourselves sick. Research shows that fear, all on its own, triggers more than 1,400 known physical and chemical responses and activities, more than 30 different hormones. The brain is a control center, isn't it? <laughs> what you think about and the Bible has said this ever since 3,000 years ago in the book of, Tha book of <laughs> Psalms. <laughs> the book of Psalms was written. It says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a woman thinks in her heart, so is she. How you think is important. What you let yourself think about. Remember what Jesus said in John 14? Let not your heart be troubled. We just said, as a man thinks in his heart, your heart thinks. What you think here in your brain will get down into your heart if you meditate on it long enough, just like the Word of God. If you meditate on the Word and the promises of God long enough, it will get down into your heart. And then when you speak, whatever you speak comes out of the heart. It's a two-way street here. And a lot of times we can find out what you're afraid of, what you fear by the words of your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. <laughs> is that something to think about? <laughs> Let me continue here. This is why we must renew our mind to God's way of thinking. There's nothing negative about God. No, it's in the world. It's in the darkness of the world, which we've been translated out of. In Colossians, it says, we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God is light. Jesus said this. He said, the things that I've spoken, I've spoken these things to you that your joy might be full. And that my joy, Jesus' joy, might be in us in abundance. That's why Jesus spoke all those words that are in red in your Bible. Okay, let's move on real quickly. The last couple minutes we have here. Number three, three things that you need to know. You need to guard your heart and mind. Out of these 30,000 thoughts that are bombarding, some of them, most of them, are supposed to be cast down. The Word of God says, 2 Corinthians 10.5, casting down imaginations, casting down arguments, and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. We bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, we, we won't accept any thoughts that enter in that are from darkness. We will not, we will resist them. If you get in a good habit of resisting thoughts that are trying to take the place of thoughts that God wants you to think about, we need to resist them. If you get in the habit of doing that, then you're going to live a better life. You're going to have a more joyful life. You're going to have a stress-free life. When we don't resist, we're opening the door. If you do not resist the spirit of fear, you're opening the door to the devil. 
and we're not ignorant of his devices because he goes about seeking whom he may destroy. He's like a roaring lion. 1 Peter 5, 8. Like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. But he goes around and he's looking for someone he can deceive into thinking, oh, none of this affects me. None of this affects me. Even though I watch this or that or I participate in certain things, it doesn't affect me. That's who the devil is looking for. Someone who's self-deceived. <laughs> Guard your heart. Guard your heart. It says that in uh, Proverbs. We don't have to turn there. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of your heart spring all the issues of life. And here's the other thing. You need to use your faith every single day. If it's true, and I'm not, I'm not saying that 30,000 thoughts are totally evil all the time, and that's how many thoughts you get. I'm just saying that the statistics show roughly about this number, even if there was only 10,000 thoughts that were coming against you today. You need to use your faith to overcome those thoughts. Or else they'll try to take root and grow. Thoughts are seeds. And the Bible says that every seed, this was spoken by God in the Garden of Eden. He spoke and he said, every seed will produce after itself. If you let seeds of doubt, fear, worry, confusion, fear, if you let seeds of fear grow, they're going to produce something. And it's not going to be good. It's going to be negative. Hi, I'm Ron Craycraft, pastor of Forecast for Life Church. At Forecast for Life Church, we always say we're not religious. Forecast for Life Church is a non-denominational assembly of believers. We're not just interested in having church services. We want to change your life and help you rise to your full potential. Our goal at Forecast for Life Church includes reaching people. It's all about people. When you walk in the door, we'll be glad to shake your hand, tell you we're glad to see you. That's the first thing that'll happen. We'll call you a friend. We'll tell you that God loves you, we love you, and God has promised that if we reach out to Him, he will come close to us and help us know the way. If you're tired of church as usual, or if you've never experienced a spiritually alive church, come and find out more about it. We're different, and we'll make a difference in your life. Jesus' first miracle was turning water to wine, and his, his mom, the, the mother of Jesus, was there, and she spoke these words. He, she said, do whatever he says. And that's a good saying for all of us. Do whatever Jesus said. He is God in the flesh. He came to earth to be our savior, our healer, our deliverer, our Lord, our king. He came for that. John 8, verse 31 this is so awesome. It says this in the New King James. It says, Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. Who's he talking to? He's talking to believers. That's important to understand. People that really believed. He's not talking to the Pharisees now and the Sadducees. All those who were criticizing him, following him around, saying he was of the devil. No, he's talking to believers. And he said this, if, everybody say if, if, if you abide in my word, if you abide in my word, and that word abide is, is huge. Abide, don't go skipping past that real fast. Abide means to live, to dwell there. 
to consistently continue in his word. If you continue in his word, you are my disciples indeed. Did you know that we are supposed to be disciples? A disciple is simply a follower of Jesus. You know, so don't, don't get yourself in this, this state of thinking, well, I'm not one of the 12 disciples. No, the 12 became apostles. The 12 were separated, that's for sure. We're not one of the 12. But we are disciples. We are followers of Jesus. How can you follow someone if you don't know what he said? I don't want to follow somebody who says the wrong things all the time. I want to follow somebody who speaks the truth in love. Who speaks and does not, does not vary from that as much as they can. We're following after uh, after the Apostle Paul, after the Apostle Peter, we're following after them as they followed the Lord Jesus. That's so important. And if you continue, if you abide in my word, and you are my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Set you free from what? From wrong thinking. See, all, it all starts in your thinking. Without the first thought, you wouldn't go into sin. Because a thought comes to you as temptation, doesn't it? A thought will come to you about a lot of things. But most of them should be resisted in the name of Jesus. Because in this world, the Bible calls the devil the prince of the power of the air. And when I think of that, I'm thinking about all the things that swirl around in our air, airwaves, and most of it is not good. You're going to have to tune in to the Lord, tune in to the Father God, tune in to what Jesus said to get something good while you're on planet Earth. I, I like this too from the Amplified. Listen to this. I'll read the same scripture. Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. So without the living part, about the doing part, all you have is a lot of knowledge. A lot of people have a lot of knowledge of the Word of God, but they have no intentions of doing the Word of God. See, if somebody knows a lot, they can quote Scripture. They've got every book and tape of Brother Do Dad, and, and they got the bumper sticker, and they got all the stuff, but they don't walk in love. They're not truly a disciple. Walking in love. Listen. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. <laughs> In this world, there's a shortage on love, joy, peace, and patience. Isn't there? There's a shortage, but we are the ones who have the light to share with the world. Don't hide it under a bushel. Don't act like the world, but broadcast it. Now hold, hold your place right there and turn to this scripture. John chapter 12. We're staying with the book of John today. John chapter 12. This is real interesting. Verse 46. You might want to underline this one. Jesus said, again, Jesus talking, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Wow, that's another use for the word abide. Uh, somebody who believes is baptized, baptized in water, confesses Jesus, baptized in the Holy Spirit, should not be walking as the world walks. Shouldn't be abiding. That Abiding means live and do. 
No, we don't abide in darkness because the word of God tells us we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, God's dear son. Amen. So there's, there's two examples of the word abide. It, it's very important. Here's another one from the New Living Translation. John chapter 8, 31. Let's read, listen to this. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Oh, that's a good way to put it, isn't it? Faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. You could say it another way, the word will make you free. Amen. Because that's what it is. If you're a disciple, you're a word person. I go by the word. No compromise. No compromise in the word. If you abide. John 15, 7. You're right there close. John 15, 7 says this. If you abide in me, Jesus talking again, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it will be done for you. That word abide applies to this one too. Somebody might say, well, I just don't understand it. God doesn't seem to hear my prayer. I'm not getting my answer. I'm not getting my healing. I'm not getting my deliverance. There's a condition. It says, if. Somebody say, if. If, if you abide in me. That means live. Do what I say. Do what Jesus says. If you abide in me and my words, talking about the word of God, the Bible, the holy scriptures, they abide in you. If you will have what you ask for. Amen. 